Alola, Pokemon trainers, and happy holidays! Professor Chaz here, the Lab Coats on Back Order, and welcome back to episode number 27 of our Pokemon Moon playthrough. In the last episode, we met up with the Professor, Professor Kukui here in Cali City, I think it's called, in the Cali Gardens. How and I told him about our rather crazy encounter we had back on the Aether Foundation VLFS, or Very Large Floating Structure, which is kind of an interesting, funny name for it. But anyway, the VLFS... We were there, and we had our first experience with the Ultra Wormhole here in the Alola region. Our first encounter with an Ultra Beast as well. Now, I'm not going to spoil what happened. It went up on last Friday in episode 25, but feel free to go back and check that out. It was an encounter to be sure, to say the least. What am I trying to say? It was something. Go back and check it out. But anyhow, the professor says that we have to meet him to catch a bus out on route number 10 to head to... I can't remember the name of the mountain, but we're going to go check out a mountain. <laughs> that is where the site of our next trial is. And I was saying in the last episode, I want to hurry up and rush to get to that trial so I can finally bring some Pokemon back that are injured or haven't been used yet. But on second thought, I realized rushing in too soon before I'm prepared could possibly lead to other Pokemon currently on the team getting injured. So if I can help it, I don't want to lose a Pokemon to bring a Pokemon back. So today's exp or today's exploration... Today's video is going to be about exploration, trying to check out some sites here in the city as well as out on route number 10. And then as long as we can gain access to the site of the next trial, I'll use that as a grinding montage between this episode and tomorrow's episode. But first, let us show you the team we are working with, of course. We have up in front, I think, do you need the level the most? Anyway, level 31, Prowl the Lycan Rock. She is a quiet Pokemon, boosting special attack and dropping speed. Keen Eye is the ability, preventing accuracy loss. Rockium Z is the held item for some Rock Z-type moves. Z-type? Some Rock-type Z moves. There we go. Rock Tomb, Bite, Counter, and Stealth Rock is the moveset. And if you check the EV training, we have her maxed out on attack stat. I really like that. It gives you a nice little sparkle to let you know when it's filled up. We're trying to get her maxed out on speed next. I think those are the two better stats for her, as you can see from the points. So, we'll go with that. Next in the team, we have Dorothy the Drift Blim, also a quiet Pokemon. Special attack up and speed down. She has the Unburdened ability. Still haven't given her an item yet. I gotta do that in just a moment. She has Hex, Gust, Minimize, and we did teach her Thunder Wave as well last episode, because I realized Hex kind of works better when they have a status condition on the target, so Thunder Wave kind of makes sense, right? 90% accurate, but if we can land that, Hex is then doubled in power, I'm pretty sure. This Relentless Attack does massive damage to a target afflicted I tried to say affected, but I started to say afflicted. So I went the other way to counter it and go into afflicted, but I said affected. Target is suffering from a status condition. There we go. And her super training, haven't done too much on that just yet. Got to go back into the bouncy castle, but I'm trying to focus on her HP and probably her special attack, I think. But last but not least, we have our starter Pokemon, Sonata the Brione. He is a careful Pokemon, boosting special defense and dropping special attack. The I sorry, the ability is Torrent, of course. Item is Waterium Z for some water type Z moves. And Scald, Aqua Jet, Echoed Voice, and Sing is the moveset. Still kind of balanced and basic on his uh, super training as well. But we are now here in the library in Cali City. Because Lily came here to look for some information about legendary Pokemon. And how to help Nebby, I think, get back to where it comes from. I want to talk about Nebby a little bit. For free! You can read all these books for free! I swear! I swear I'd live here if I could! I don't want to die until I've read every last word on every last page of every book in the world! Would that even be humanly possible? There are like so many books and there's always new books coming out every day. How could you manage that? Anyone is welcome to read the books here at the Mali Library. Anyone, including Team Skull? Probably. I came all the way from Johto to visit Alola. Is it true you can't use fly to fly around here? I'm going to say yes it is, because I can't even teleport outside of battle. Wow, so it's really a thing. This really is a whole different region. But then how do folks in Alola fly around? On Charizard. Wow, so everyone just rides around on special Charizard that have been raised for the job? Sounds weird if you ask me, but I've got to admit that riding on a Charizard would be a blast. Thanks for teaching me about how things are here in Alola. Hey, you might as well have this. I was going to say, is it going to be the Fly HM, or rather TM? Not bad. Back where I'm from, in Johto, this kind of TM is a real big deal. They're called Hidden Machines, or HMs, because they're so hard to get your hands on. But I guess here it's just another TM. Maybe you can use it in battle or something. Let's see if we can actually teach it to anybody. I highly doubt it. Actually? Yeah. Dorothy can learn fly. 
In fact, we didn't check the other TMs that I bought last time. Rock Polish, Prowl can learn. Of course, we know Dorothy can get Payback. No one can get Steel Wing. Everyone can get Facade. Aerial Ace, no. Smackdown, no. And Roost, no. Huh. That could be an idea to replace with or pl replace Gust with. It is more than double the power. But it does take two turns to use. I'm going to wait on that. But it's cool to know that we have Fly. And this does, of course, finally confirm the fact that HMs do not exist here in Alola. They are just basic TMs. And I would assume that means that they can be forgotten on the fly as opposed to going to a move deleter. <laughs> on the fly! Get it? I didn't even realize what I said there. Meow. This is a book for Pokemon. Hey, there's Samson. Alola, young Chaz. Since you're out and about exploring your island challenge, you must already know about regional variants, don't you? Yeah, I've noticed. Just as I would have expected. Yes, regional variants. They arise when the influence of a particular region causes a Pokemon's physical aspect to, and even type to change. If you've caught one of the local Persians, the regional variants, I would quite like to see it. Well, I don't have one, unfortunately. Now, this leads into the question. I don't know if I actually pose this question to anybody out there. I've read there is a book somewhere in this library but the legendary Pokemon said to be Alola's very own moon. Can I read these books at all? So the question is, we know that here in the Alola region, if you capture a Pikachu, and apparently if you do use a Thunderstone on it, spoilers, it evolves into Alolan Raichu. My question about that is, is it because of the atmosphere of the Alola region causing all Pikachu to evolve into Alolan Raichu here, or is it because Pikachu born here have, say, Alolan DNA, allowing them to evolve into Alolan Raichu. For that matter, if I caught a Pikachu, for example, my actual Pikachu from Fire Red, from the uh, Viridian Forest, if I eventually do, well, when I eventually do trade him up through, through the Pokemon Bank to here, if I was to use a Thunderstone, would he evolve into the Alolan Raichu, or would he evolve into a standard Raichu, because he comes from a different region? Then, my question is, if I capture a Pikachu in this region, and an eventual Gen 8 game comes out, and I transfer that Pikachu to that region, will it still evolve to Al Alolan Raichu, or the standard Raichu, or whatever new Raichu might be in that region? There's so many questions about these Alola forms, and there are no answers just yet. It must be a very valuable book, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to take it out of the library. Looks like someone might have the answer for you there, Lily. You look like a ghost type. Is this what you're looking for, princess? Give it a read. Uh, oh, uh, of course. How do I think ghost type? Well, all those stitches and the uh, purple color, of course. Well, it's titled The Light of Alola. I'll just, um, read it aloud, shall I? Please do. I can't really read... Pixels. The empty sky broke asunder, a hole appearing where none had been. Where had been none. I can't read, apparently, even words. A single beast appeared from in it. It was named the beast that calls the moon. The king of Alola bowed before it, the beast that stole all heaven's light. The island's guardian fought against it, but in the end they lost the fight. Why would they fight against it? Then did the beast that brings the dark call its pall in the line of kings. So would the beast that had won mark the path for all such finished things. Beast of sun and beast of moon, through their union they brought new life. A fragile heir in Alola born that island guardians would keep from strife. Huh. The ancient king sang their thanks for Lunala with song of flute. Two tones rang out across the altar, a perfect pair ever after mute. So the guardians are protecting something that was created from the two legends. Isn't it great? My dad's books are all great. What? Uh, I mean, yes it is, but when you say your father, isn't this book very old? Yeah, it belonged to my dad. I don't know, I don't look it, but my family used to be pretty much royalty. Acerola? How would you pronounce that? I'll call you Ace. I had to have all my dad's books moved here so they didn't get ruined by the Pokemon. I can tell you lots of other old stories about Alola too, you interested? Well, that would be wonderful. I would be delighted if you did. I think I'll stay here, but I know why you've come to Ula Ula. You'll be undergoing another trial, won't you, Chaz? Good luck with it. I read that Ula Ula Island's electric type trial. Great! Can only be reached by the bus on Route 10. We're gonna meet that Sophocles guy that we met back in the Festival Plaza, but electric type. <sighs> there are plenty of Pokemon living on Route 10. Wouldn't you like to meet a few? Z -z -z -z. So we got ourselves an interesting trial coming up. Oh, Chaz, I didn't forget. You're here to clear the Ula Ula, the Ula, Ula trials, right? Good luck. What does this book say? 
The Guardians and the Ancient Kings. In ancient times, the Tapu served as the leaders of the armies of each island's king, but if they used their Z-Power in battle, it caused great destruction across the islands. Yeah, about 75% of them were destroyed, weren't they? Because of this, the Tapu came to no longer lend their aid in the Wars of Men. That's rather uh, responsible of them, actually. Oh, you're a trial-goer. You're just a few steps away from the trial at Mount Hokulani. That's the name of the mountain. Well, a few steps in a bus ride, that is. You can catch the bus from Route 10. The Tapu and the Island Kahunas. The Tapu choose the Kahunas of their islands and entrust them with special sparkling stones. What reasoning they use to make such a choice, however, is not at all apparent to observers. The Guardian Deities of the Islands. I'm reading these all backwards. The Tapu regularly keep themselves closed tight in their shells as they absorb nature's energy. After many long years of absorbing such energy, their shells become hard and sturdy. The Legendary Pokemon and the Tapu. A great and terrible battle waged between the Tapu and the Legendary Pokemon, but neither side could claim victory over the other. Upon finding themselves equals, the Legendary Pokemon then gifted the Tapu with great power of unknown providence. Hmm. Wouldn't that have... If they were equals and the legendaries give power, wouldn't that then put the the Tapus on a higher level? Am I following that right? It's only by reading some really terrible books that you learn to recognize the good ones. I guess I could agree with you. Kind of like uh, movies in a way as well. It's fine not to have any great ideology yet. Just don't make any rash decisions. That is actually what I was talking about. I don't want to rush into the next trial. I'm going to get to the area and then take my time and make sure I'm grounded up or grind it up, whatever the past tense would be. Is that past tense? I should read more books. Anyway, I want to make sure I am prepared for that next trial. So, I do want to check out another place here. Like I say, this episode might be more of an exploration type episode. I don't want to rush in too quickly. And I do know that there is a... don't know if it's a battle buffet, so to speak, but some sort of restaurant here that I'm going to grab a seat and see what we can pull off. First of all, who is in the lead? Prowl does need the next level. Okay, so Prowl is our lead Pokemon. Plus, if there's some team battles, I can use the uh, Stealth Rocks. Yes, let's get myself something to eat here, please. Is your wallet all right? You should look into it. Our meals cost 4,000 each. Oh, how much do I even have? In fact, I haven't looked at my trainer password in a long time. I've got 940 bucks. I've got Melee Melee Trial Completion, Akala Island Trial Completion, and another... 12 pages of blank. What is going to fill up these pages? Because obviously there's only four grand trials. That's going to be like page five. So, can I scrounge up enough cash to do something here? I could probably do that by battling trainers. Let's see if I can find any. I'm your friendly neighborhood policeman. I can't get enough of giving people directions. So, my young trial goer, I've got some directions for you. If you head straight up from here, you'll reach the library. Go to the left and you'll find Route 10. Head down, you'll get to Route 11. What about up? Well, I said, I guess you said library. You know, I could have just read that too. But what does this lead to? Hmm. Mysterious dark lit street at night. Excuse me, sir. Can you help me out? Grimer, eat garbage. But if they run out of garbage to eat, sometimes they start taking bites out of nearby buildings. Whoa! We janitors have to use our formidable skills to keep them in check. I thought that was actually all he was going to say. Grimers eat garbage. That would have been an awesome bit of dialogue to hear. So, I don't want to go there just yet. It obviously leads to another route. And I don't want to skip... I don't want to sequence break the game. Although, Pokemon's pretty good at keeping you from being able to do that. I think the only other time I can think of you could... Not so much sequence break, but do things in a different order. Was, uh... Well, in Gen 1, you could fight Sabrina and Koga in whatever order you want. In Gen 2, you could actually fight, I believe, Chuck, Jasmine, and Price in whatever order also. I don't know if you'd describe the bird Pokemon in Alola as being comfortable around people, or just plain aggressive. Hmm? Aren't those two things kind of against each other? Okay, I walked into a wall there, apparently. So Route 10 is this way. I might as well go this way. This is the way that we're supposed to progress through the uh, game, of course. And Professor Gakui... Is here somewhere. As is a train. Nope. Oh, looks like you're a trial goer, eh? Then I've got a favor to ask of you then. I'm gonna say you want me to capture. I don't know. 
Oh wait, my stuffle hadn't been getting much exercise lately, so I left the other balls to have them run around a bit, but they haven't come back. I want you to look for them, but it's hard for an old leader like me to traipse around. If you find one of my little stuffle, you just tell them to come back to me. Oh, so this isn't a capture quest. Okay, they're impish creatures, but a smart cookie, but smart as a cookie, and with noses that could sniff out anything. They'll find their way back home to me. Will you help me find my stuffle? Yes. Eight stuffle lost there, so maybe they're hiding. All right, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Well, gee, what's in that tree? A wooded path where Pokemon live. Why is the bus so far from the city? Don't you think it should be, like, in the city? Am I going to have to knock it out? That looked big. I don't think that's a Stuffle. That's not a Stuffle, but we do have our Rock-type out in the lead, so I think we're okay here. This will be good to experience, I'm sure. Well, I wouldn't really knock this out, because we're already more than five levels above, but since it attacked me out of a tree, let's do it. Coming at me through the grass is one thing. Diving out of a tree, trying to sniper me. And a critical hit! Way to go, Prowl! You did it! I'm praising you. But yeah, coming out from a tree at me like that is way too aggressive. I gotta take you down a peg for that. Do we have a trainer? No. I was walking by that tree and a Pokemon landed right on my head. I don't know if I should call that luck or what. I wouldn't. We can see a trainer here. Is that an item? No, I don't think so. Based on the map, it looks like it's just grass kind of moving around the edge of the mountain. Let's go, sir. The ridiculous power at the scene of a fire. Now, I'm assuming... Wait a minute, no. I'm assuming a fireman would have fire types, but wouldn't he actually have water types? So, Alex, and just one sec, there's a phone call coming in. Sorry about that, folks, but good news, we've got hot water again. Yes, speaking of which, I'm in a bit of hot water myself right now. We have a rock type in against a Poliwhirl at comparable level. So it is time to switch out to Dorothy. This thing can't learn any, I don't think, any ghost or dark type moves. No electric moves, rock, don't think so. Ice, oh, actually it could learn ice moves. And it goes for the rain dance. I believe they can get swift swim. Let's see how fast you are after Thunder Wave, Poliwhirl. But yeah, so logically, I'm trying to think, why, you know, what kind of fire types would they use? We can use uh, Prowl against them, and I completely forgot. No, a firefighter would use water to fight fire. And we have another phone call. One moment. Actually, let's watch this. We'll get the Thunder Wave off. And as the ring continues to fall, I'll be back in another moment. Alright, phone calls like crazy, but things are straightened away. So we have this Poliwhirl paralyzed. Hex is now going to be double the power. Is it enough for a one-hit KO? Because this thing's only three levels lower than us, though. Look at the power behind that hex attack. I love it. You're a hex maniac, Dorothy. Oh, we got a care for you, too. Oh, yeah, you're all wet now, aren't you? Prowl hit level 32. I lost. I was extinguished. No, you were water type. We, we evaporated you is what happened. So let's dry you off, Dorothy. I think Prowl might need to get dried off as well. And plus, being rock type, I wonder if that would actually be super effective on her. They don't really distinguish that. It's like... So, if it's raining, we understand that, you know, water attacks are super effective on Rock-type. Would, wouldn't the rainy condition harm Pokemon like that? Nope, Prowl is fine, okay. You would think so, but maybe a focused water attack is different than natural water. For that matter, would a Rock-type be able to swim then? Because it's not a focused attack, it's just natural occurring water. When Poliwhirl is on the ground, its sweat makes it slippery, so when you touch it, it feels slimy in a good way. Hey, there's a Stuffle! Change the subject right away! Sniff, sniff. Grrr. Sounds threatening. Stuffle ran off in a hurry, so that's one. Got a little bit of a side quest. I see on the map a nice icy mountain down below. As soon as possible, I want to get to that icy mountain. I might have uh, led to... That was a Skarmory! But I might have led to the uh, the reason why. So it does actually show this, the silhouette of the Pokemon that's coming after you. That's really cool. Okay, this thing is going to ha possibly have a... I, I sounded scared there. It's going to ha ha possibly have a Steel-type attack. Probably our best bet is to go to Sonata. In fact, I still got to switch uh, Dorothy to the active spot. But we'll resist the Steel attack. Flying. It's going to hurt, but Water attack will be much better against this thing. Let's go for Air Cutter. I don't think you have very good special attack, though, there, Skarmory. You want to calm down a bit and step back? Scald attack. In fact, we're almost at level 33 with Sonata, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it's cool it shows the silhouette of the actual Pokemon, so you can tell what it is before the battle begins. We got the burn! You know, we could capture this thing. But I already have my idea in mind what I want to catch, which I was just sort of alluding to by the fact that I said, I see a snowy mountain down below, and I've got an idea in mind for what's going to happen once we get there. 
critical hit. Now, what I think is interesting about Burn, let's say if I use Growl to lower the attack set of the Skarmory, a critical hit ignores that attack drop, but a Burn does not get ignored by critical hits, which is good to know. At least I'm pretty sure it doesn't. In my experience, I don't think it has. Level 33 for our starter Pokémon. And special attack up to 68. Special defense at 74. Wants to learn Double Slap. Huh. 15 power, 85 accuracy. Nah. Nah, we'll keep what we have. Double Slap's really one of those moves that you want to get rid of as soon as possible. If we didn't have Echoed Voice, then maybe, but... Echoed Voice is a much better one to go for, as long as we can get some consecutive attacks off. So let's switch our Pokémon around. Sonata is still in the back, but Prowl needs to switch over to Dorothy, who could probably use a potion right about now. Let's open up the bag and heal up our Drift Blim. I think a couple times I've referred to her as a Drift Loon by mistake, because I still see her as a little baby. No, that's not true. It's just me being stupid and forgetting the name of the species. But we see some berries up here, and there's another Stuffle hidden behind the tree. Move it, Stuffle. That's only two, though. Where are the other ones hiding? Would they be in the grass? Probably, knowing my luck. Yeah, of course, we're gonna get attacked. Come on, Crab Brawler. So with Dorothy in front, that's actually not bad. We're immune to your fighting-type attacks. I was gonna think if we had a Prowl out in front, but I forgot. We just switched. So Thunder Wave, probably the best way to go. And then, you know what? You're only level 25. So long. Of course, that kind of goes against the fact, like I said, if I get attacked from a tree, I want to knock out that Pokemon, but... Oh, I, ha I have to beat it! Okay, that's interesting to know. I didn't realize that. It's guarding those berries. I wonder if you could keep doing this until maybe if it appears as a shiny. Or would it constantly give you the same Pokemon each time? I could double check to see if that last one was female, but I can't recall. Anyway, wait, I have super effective Gust Attack. And there's that 10% accuracy miss! We've seen it in action! Yeah, we'll just Gust. Super effective. If I had Fly, that'd be pretty cool. But, it's gonna do at least half, come on. That's at least half. I'll take that! Oh yeah, I gotta care for Dorothy now. Jump on in, we'll brush that dust off. Grab some berries, and there's an item off to the right hidden in the grass, which I happen to see. Only two dust today, you're doing better, Dorothy. Although... I've still seen, I think, just one gust cause uh, three dusts on you. But all brushed up, nice and beautiful once again. I realized, too, so I named her Dorothy after Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, who got back home, no, who was going to get back home using a hot air balloon. And I realized her last name was actually Gale. Dorothy Gale is her full name, so Gale, being a wind-type effect, could have also been a good nickname for Dorothy. Because she's a flying type. And there's a Paralyze Heal. I don't think there's any Stuffle in there. Wait. Do you see what I see? Hello, Stuffle. Good try. But I've played so many Where's Waldo books in my day, you gotta get up pretty early in the morning to slip past me. Young boy with an Island Challenge amulet, your Pokemon are looking a bit tired. Thank you! I'll take that free heal. Young boy with an Island Challenge amulet, your Pokemon are healthy. Is that how you greet everybody that walks by? So we see... I think I hear rustling in the grass. Wait! I see a Stuffle! Haha, -ha, I avoided the Pokemon. I see a Stuffle! Behind the sign! Get moving, Stuffle. How many is that? Four? It's number five. Yeah, I tell you though, in some of those Where's Waldo books... Has anyone out there played Where's Waldo? And by play, it's kind of a weird way to put it, but it's like... If you don't know what Where's Waldo is... I'll explain that as we fight this person. Were you bothered by this beauty strolling along or by my Pokemon? Neither. I just want experience. So, Where's Waldo was a series of picture books in which the artist would create a whole mess of people in this one area, like a big two-sided, or uh, what do you call it, two-page picture. Steeny! We're fighting to get, uh... Cordial back! Why did it take me forever to remember the name? I'm already forgetting my injured Pokemon. <laughs> Anyway, Where's Waldo is a picture book where you have to find this character named Waldo, who is very distinct. He has a red striped shirt, a red and white hat, glasses, blue pants, and the goal of the game is in every page, every uh, picture in the book, you got to find Waldo hidden somewhere. Of course, the fun part is a lot of times he's only got his head peeking out from behind a group of people or behind some sort of object, and he's really hard to find. 
so maybe playing those as a kid has trained my eye to find little minute details. I've also played games where you bother me. I'll show you two identical pictures, or seemingly identical. There are, say, five or six different changes from one to the other. you got to pick out those changes, and I always had fun with those. Telling someone their Pokemon are cute is a good way to strike up a conversation. I'll keep that in mind. What Pokemon? Firo. Let's go. Actually, yeah, what is your experience, or what is your level at? Are you worth getting in the knockout? Probably not with Dorothy, because our attacks are not super good against you. Nah, you're only level 25. I'll let you go. Good thing you didn't uh, outspeed us and pursue us. Very nice. Actually, yeah, those things can have pursuit. i got to be careful with that. So I see an item. Stuffle hiding in the grass. I thought they might be here. Pick up an X accuracy for our troubles. Stuffle, get moving, buddy. That should be number six. And the flag is way up there, so we're almost done with Route 10. What kind of encounters can we find here? So, Wild Raticate. I'm pretty sure your level shouldn't be too much for us to get experience off of, but if it is, not... Okay, we'll just walk away. Does Pursuit hit if we run? It might. Just might not have gone for it. But as time went on and the Where's Waldo books became more popular, there were a lot of things they added to it. Buses can get a whole lot of people to where they need to go all at once. Though I'd kind of like to see a whole herd of ride Pokemon like Tauros stampeding together. Well, I've got one. This is... Oh, I see the other stuffle in the grass. We found all eight. All right, so this wasn't a capture quest, which is totally fine. Last one, I'm going to have to go all the way back and talk to the lady. But first, let's fight a police officer. Wee-oo. Wee- Wait. Wee-oo. Wee-oo. My impression of a siren is pretty good, eh? I'm pretty good at Pokemon battles, too. Are you really now? What would you have? I thought we... Or I think we fought some before where they had, like, Growlithe. I like how he's doing that, like, what, whatever he's doing. Mitchell. With a Growlithe. Now, I'm pretty sure they can learn Bite. Can they learn Crunch? Something seems to tell me that they can. But not being stabbed. You might be okay. There's the Intimidate, but that is okay. We're going to go with the Thunder Wave and Hex Combo once again. Land this one. There we go. I wonder if Pokemon Refresh Affection helps the accuracy of your Pokemon as well. I don't think it does. Don't burst my balloon! Come on, man. Alright, Hex Attack. Is this enough for a one-hit KO? I want to say maybe, hopefully. Look at the power of that combination. Why didn't I think of using that before? Could use that against UB01. Actually, I want to talk about UB01 a little bit. First of all, we get a level up for Dorothy. And some cash from Mitchell. You're something else. You're better at Pokemon battles than I am. Well, I've been training for the past six generations, now seven and a half ish. So, stands to reason. I want to put a siren on Tauros and make it exclusive to police officers. Could I have one? Alright, let's switch our Pokemon around. Prowl now needs the next level. And let's get this last stuffle back to. Let's give a held item to Dorothy finally. I'm just now remembering I didn't do that yet. We don't have any citrus berries. Actually, you know what? I'm pretty sure berry juice is usable by Pokemon as well. We'll find out if she gets down below half HP. But from what I recall, yeah, from watching some uh, UCL battles in the uh, Little Cup, the trainers were giving berry juice to a lot of the Pokemon, and it was a held item usable in battle, so that is good. That's the last stuffle. Looks like they've all gone back to the trainer. Let us now speed through this. Go, Tauros! It's so fun to be able to go so fast like this. Alright, got all your stuffle back. What do I get for all the troubles? Oh, you child! All of my stuffle have made it back thanks to you! You've been a great help to me here. I surely do owe you, my young friend. Take these for me along with my thanks. These? Okay. Never melt ice. And money! I can go back to that restaurant now. Cute and strong and just a little bit wild. That's what a Pokemon should be like, and that's why my Stuffle is the best. So, forget you, Kikui. I'm going to get something to eat. I can finally afford to eat something. I don't think there's anything I wanted to buy in the apparel shop anyway, so let's drop some cash here in whatever this place is. Alright, yep. We want to get something to eat here, sir. I'll show you the menu. Please choose from these items. Each item costs 4000 Ninja set... So, Z Kaiseki, Ninja Set Samurai, Geisha, Ronin. Let's go with my Turtle Heritage of Ninja Set. We'll make you the Ninja Set, okay? Okay, I'll bring the food. No, wait. We did this before. Is it a battle, or do we just get an item 
Yeah, this was back in Kony Kony City. Here's the Zeke Kaiseki. Sorry to interrupt. Is this sushi? Fun fact, I've tried sushi once before. Wasn't a big fan of it. I liked cooked food. Or, I, I liked cooked food. I like cooked food. Mmm, delicious, but my character seems to like it. Oh, it's grilled. Okay, that's not so bad. The grilled teriyaki is full of flavor and has just the right amount of oil. Fantastic. The pickled vegetables are well-seasoned and provide the perfect refresher between bites. It was delicious. I'm hungry. I just had breakfast, but I'm hungry again. Thanks for your payment. And what do we get? Free gift to the patrons. I'll take that. All I gotta do is find myself a movery learner. Please, you come again. Alright, hey, Stuffle. Not one of the ones we had to just find, I'm sure. Unless it just ran away. Phew, am I ever starving? Which one of the Z I just said it like 20 times. Which one of the Z Kaiseki sets should I get? Delmi's creates whirlpools to suck in and catch other Pokemon. Delmi's or Delmi's. I've heard that name in Festival Plaza, but I don't know what Pokemon it is. Fishermen in Alola have learned to target its whirlpools and catch Pokemon there too. The wash basins they keep in Pokemon centers have been infused with some of Comfe's own healing components. That's why they smell so good. That makes sense. Bruxish is a Pokemon that puts fear into even Pokemon like Sharpedo. Because if they use like Aqua Jet and stuff like that, they ain't going nowhere with that dazzling ability. That's why lifeguards on the beaches often help out and get helped by Bruxish. Bruxish. Because they help keep the beaches safe. Well, that takes me back to the days of my own youth spent on the beach. Amazing. This place makes everyone feel like a high roller. Well, I did have to do a big uh, mission to get the money to do this. I visited a restaurant with the same name in Kalos one time. Really? What's the name of this place? Hmm, suddenly I really want to drink tea. I couldn't even see a name on the side, or on the uh, sign outside. Please trade my happening for your Pancham. I ain't got no Pancham. Okay, maybe next time. Maybe not next time. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Probably not, though. Alright, so we are done here. That was just a quick little side story type thing. Let's head back down route number 10, and finally make it to... Hokulani Mount? Or Mount Hokulani. Let's see if my memory serves correctly. Oh. I see trouble. Let's go! It is a... Fira once again. Probably not worth the experience. Could have been a shiny, though. That's why I want to check for some wild encounters, but... You know what the odds are of finding a shiny Pokemon? Apparently 1 in 4,000. Based on a punk that was talking to me outside of Game Freak's little... Branch office? Vacation residence? I don't know what you would call it. Somewhere back in Hey Hey City, though. Alright. Let's see what these goofballs are up to. Yo, 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 what? You never see somebody take a bus stop to go before? Hey, yo, yo. Who's trying to steal our bus stop? Best go find your own, you heard. Are you guys really going to attack me for going to a bus stop? Even Plumeria thinks you guys are idiots. That's not helping your case. Alright, Team Skull Grunt, you got one Pokemon. What's it gonna be? Yep, yep, something weak to rock. I am tempted to go for the Z-type rock attack. In fact, having said that, I just wanna see what it's called. Continental Crush! The user summons a huge rock mountain using its Z-Power and drops it onto the target with full force. The power varies depending on the original move. Physical, 120. That is way too much. Again, I'm going to preserve the Z-Attacks for when I actually need them. And Team Skull, I don't need them for you guys. Not yet. Maybe the admins. Once we eventually meet them. Other than Plumeria. But, hey, yo, yo, yo! When I fight, I'm not supposed to lose. Then, get better? That's my expert advice to you as a professor to a trainer. Dang, I lost. Then my homie's gonna fight you. That's just life in Team Skull. We stand up to even the strong, yo. We stand up, but not for long, yo. Are you trying to imply that that means you win quickly or lose quickly? I'm going to cast my vote upon the latter. Because... Experience just tells me so. Alright, you've got a Pokemon. Dark normal. This is where I would love to have that brick break. However, since we know you are more physical offensive than anything, let's go for that counter attack. See what we can get out. 
crunch. Hit me with your best. Counter. Want to crunch me again? You're welcome too. Thank you. Using your own power against you. Yeah, critical, of course. And you lower the defense. Well, this is a massive counter. I see why counter doesn't copy back the stat changes, too. That would be pretty cool if they actually did that. Alright, not bad. More damage than I wanted to take, but I don't know if you care. That bus stop weighs about as much as a golem. Oh, you're actually trying to take the, the, the sign? What is with you guys? Yo, think about bus drivers. If we take this bus stop, they can all chill. I guess in a way, it's nice they're helping the bus drivers, but I mean, I take the bus to get around myself. I need my stops. <sighs> yep, shrug it up. Oh, I'm over this. Back to living large at the mansion. Huh. You guys have a mansion? Yeah, apparently. Chez, where were you at? I walked this whole route and didn't see you. What's going on? Some Team Skull Punks just ran past me going the other direction, yeah? I sure wish they'd challenge the League instead of getting up to no good all the time. The League? There's no League here. Oh, <laughs> you'll find out soon enough. Just you wait, cousin. But first things first. If you want to head up to Mount Hokulani, we should take the bus. It'll blast us up there to the top, yeah, as quick as a sky uppercut. Let me guess, from an Alakazam? When is that Executor Express gonna come? Maybe the bus stop will give you a clue. Alright, first of all, we do need to heal. Because those counterattacks took a lot out of us. Go for a nice super potion on Prowl. Back up to full. Alright. Let's see what the bus stop has to say since Team Skull didn't manage to steal it away. There's a bus stop here. Do you want to wait and catch the bus through Hokulani Observatory? Not just yet. I want to wait and see if there's anything hidden in this area. Do me a favor and check out the bus stop to see when the next one's coming, would you? Yeah, 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 yeah. In a minute. What is this? Mount Hokulani, please use the designated bus to come and go. Oh, I can't get through? Come on, I can't walk. Look at that paved road. All right, let's take this bus. I wanted to talk about UB01. Now, you're welcome aboard the Executor Express. Our safe driving record will absolutely slay you. Come on, come on, climb aboard. That's a weird, really, really weird way to put that. Mount Hokulani. So we'll get over this little bit of dialogue, then I'll talk about the Ultra Beast. Over here! So we're doing way up here on the mountain. Mount Hokulani is the second tallest mountain in Alola. And the tallest... You're gonna show us, aren't you? Look at all the lights over there. Check it out, Chaz. You see that steep, jutting, majestic peak right over there? I do. Is that the Ice Mountain? That's Mount Lan Lanakila, the highest peak in Alola. Lanakila, Lanakila, I don't know how to pronounce these things. I say Lanakila. It's a sacred spot, yeah, the closest you can ever get to the legendary Pokemon of Alola. It's said to be the Moon Incarnate. That's right, right there, on the peak of Lanakila. That's where we'll establish our Pokemon League. So you're gonna build the League. Interesting. I don't know if all the professors did that. Probably not. We'll get everybody who's finished their island challenges, yeah? And up there on the peak of Mount Lanakila, they'll battle against the Kahunas to become the Island Challenge Champion. So the Kahunas are going to be the Elite Four, essentially. I've always valued our old traditions here in Alola, but it's time to make a champion the whole world will recognize. It's time to get our own Elite Four and make our own Pokemon League. Cool. To think that someday the kiddos in Alola will be able to go from being the Island Challenge Champion to the World Champion. And then, when we have our own champion, they can show the rest of the world what's so special about Alolan Pokemon and their trainers. Yeah. That is actually pretty cool. I like that. Ho Hokulani Observatory is on Mount Hokulani's peak. The air is real clear at high altitudes. So, side note, talk about UB01. When we first encountered it back in the VLFS, I was thinking, I don't want to outright attack it because it's like, we don't know why it's here. We don't know its intentions. The moment we got into battle against it, it one-shot KO'd Cordial, my Steenie. And at that point, I was out for revenge. I was going to take it down, and I was in the mindset that the next time I see that thing, it's going to be no holds barred. However, after the battle, Lusamine did say that it seemed like it was in pain just being in our dimension. So it might have struck out in defense, so to speak, you know? Like, maybe it didn't realize what it was doing. So... I'm going to give that UB01 one more chance to be a good person, be a good 
whatever it is. So, if my guard is let down and I fall victim to another one of its attacks again, then I'm not going to be so lenient. But we'll see what happens if and when it shows up again. Let's talk to all the... Oh, there's a Pokemon Center here, too. Whoa, are you walking down the mountain? It's pretty far to the next bus stop. I ain't going down there. Or am I? I actually can. Well, I'm not going to do that just yet, though. I'll talk to this gentleman here. Sorry, youngster, but I can't fight you. My Pokemon is like a brother to me, and he's not interested in battling weaklings. If you want me to ask him to fight you, fight against you, then beat all the trainers on Mount Hokulani. I suppose I'm going to have to do that eventually, but first, let's talk to everybody here. I'm not interested in fighting. I want to explore. Thanks to Pokemon's help, I can patrol even a peak, even the peak of a mountain. Let's go in here. Do we need to heal? Probably. We'll heal up and then talk to everybody here, see what they're going to be selling in the Pokemon Mart, perhaps. So if this is the site of our next trial, I can go ahead and train up on the mountain, the bus path. Alright, so what are you selling over here? you got two shopkeepers. There's a Starmie sitting right over there. You've got all the stat boosters. No thanks. Actually, I have some of those in my bag still. My Starmie. It's been pointing itself towards space and lighting up its core. Do you think... Do you think it's sending some kind of message? Me. It's sending a message out saying, Me. I live here. The Pokemon storage system that our PCs use was developed by a man from Kanto named Bill. Though the Alola Pokemon storage system is maintained by our own Mr. Mul Mulane? Maline? Like I said, I can't pronounce things here in the Alola region. I love having the cafe space in the PMC. Drinks normally cost an arm and a leg up on the mountain, you know. Ooh, really? Welcome to the Pokemon Center. It's now zero o'clock. I suppose, yeah. The supply and demand... Oh, I just chose that many by accident. Whatever. I'll take it. But supply and demand means that they can charge a lot more for things that are more rare in this instance. Whereas if you go down the mountain, you can probably get it for cheaper. One lemonade just for you. Did you know the aid part of lemonade originally comes from the Kalos region? Really? By the way, are you riding Stoutland? Not lately. You can find all kinds of stuff when you're riding that Pokemon. I get so into it when I ride Stoutland, I completely lose track of time. That's why I'm not getting too into it. I have a time limit to keep on these episodes. I relax here at the cafe while my partner takes it easy off on Pokepelago. Ah, oh, what a life. I should check that back again and show you guys how the Pelago is coming. I still haven't been able to improve it yet. I don't have enough Pokemon, but slowly, every day, I'm getting maybe one or two Pokemon that are building up the numbers in the PC. Pokemon are in space, too? Wow! The peak of Mount Hokulani is the second closest place to space in the Alola region. Other one, of course, being the eventual Pokemon League. Hmm, what is hidden back here? Why can I not get through here? Oh, I can! Okay. Level Ball. Good for catching lower level Pokemon. Anything else hidden away back here? Oh, what are you doing up here, Oak? Oh, hello, hello, Alola! You know, there's this Pokemon called Minior. It comes down from space like a shooting star. And the cores of these Minior seem to shine in a number of different colors, like Lumas. They don't seem to be regional variants, but it's an interesting phenomenon nonetheless. Here, I've been wanting to give you this. Wait a minute, that's a Kurt Pokeball! I'll help you try to complete your Pokedex, for Rotom's sake as well. That is cool! I now have a Moon Ball that I can use. The Kurt Balls are usable again! Pokeball makes it easier to catch Pokemon that evolve using a Moonstone. Thank you, Samson. That is really cool to have. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but I almost feel like I kind of have to. Huh. So, I also want to talk about good old Nebby. I started talking about this a little bit back in the library, but I got sidetracked. When they first announced Nebby in the trailer, I looked at it for a little bit, and I had this suspicion that the color scheme and some of the designs of it... It looks like Lunala, you know? And I said that back in one of my trailer reaction videos. They've now announced that Pokemon GX cards... Well, they, know, they already announced Pokemon GX cards are going to be in the next set for Sun and Moon coming in January. But they have shown that Lunala GX and uh, Solgaleo GX are Stage 2 Pokemon cards, which means that you have to evolve into them. And I think each of them say they evolve from either Lunala or Solgaleo, for example. That would mean Lunala and Solgaleo are both Stage 1 Pokemon which means they have to evolve from another Pokemon. You see where I'm going with this? From day one of Cosmo or Cosmog's appearance and re uh, reveal, I've suspected that it might become Lunala. Now, I don't know if that's true. That might be spoilers. I hope it's not. I kind of hope it is, because if, if it is true, then it means that I had this kind of pegged from the beginning. But anyway, that's just me patting myself on the back. That's kind of what I'm thinking of as far as the future for Nebby. Thank you for choosing Executor Express. Want to ride down to the stop at the base? No, I'm not done here yet. Got it! Then just come give me a holler when you want to go. 
So the bus is waiting just for me alone. That is awesome. And who is this? And where were you, Kakui? Hey there. You're still fired up as ever, eh, Royal? Uh... Huh! Chess, let me introduce you. This is Mulane. Oh, this is the guy that does the PC. He runs the observatory here, but also manages the P-box... The, the, the P-boxes. What? He runs the observatory here, but also manages the PC boxes, but he's not Hokulani's captain. But I was the captain once, my masked friend. Stop giving away the secret identity! It's like if you're best friend of Spider-Man, you're saying, Hey, Spidey! It's Chaz, right? Thanks for coming all the way up Hokulani to visit us. But our Captain Sophocles is a very busy young man, always calculating comments as his path or working on that Festival Plaza thing of his. So I'll just determine whether you're qualified to take on the trial. You gonna fight me? I'll gladly show you the skills of a trainer who toughened up while adventuring alongside Kikui back in the day. Let's go, Mulane. You're gonna have electric types, though? That what That is what concerns me. Alright, I should have bought Bulldoze TM, see if uh, Prowl could learn that. Actually, you're gonna lead with a Skarmory. Okay, look how we're battling on the road. That's pretty cool. So, as I say, Steel type would be a problem to hit Prowl with. And level 29. I'm gonna stick it in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay in. I'm gonna Rock Tune. We're already faster. Yeah, physical defense is way too good. You do have a Steel type attack. All right, we handle that quite easily, though. We are going to probably, I think, switch now, though. Go so going to Sonata. Now, this might be a bit of an extended episode, but what I would like to do is hopefully get to the point that I can prepare for the trial and grind up for that. Okay, Scald Attack. i got to turn my heater off once again. A little too warm right now. It's kind of weird for me to say that. Like, usually my house gets very, very cold in wintertime. In fact, now that I've just turned off the heater, I'm already starting to feel a bit of a chill. That's how crazy this uh, this house can be. But anyway, Scald brings down the Skarmory. What else would Mulane have to offer? Just don't be an electric type. Level 33 for Prowl. And Metang. That is kind of scary, too, but we will resist any steel type attacks. Can we get the Scald? If we can get Skull. Can we get the burn with Skull? Doesn't look like it, but they go for Pursuit, which isn't Stab. You don't have Tough Claws yet. You haven't Mega Evolved, or even just Plain Evolved just yet. Now the Skull Attack. Then maybe an Aqua Jet for the Knockout? Probably with the burn. Just in case it has Bullet Punch. I want to try to minimize the damage that we'll be taking. So that was like, what, 5 damage? 4 damage? So would an Aqua Jet be enough at this point? I'm going to try. I'm going to find out. Oh, well, they heal the burn. Which is a bit of a problem, because this might not be enough now. Yeah, the burn would have done it, but Aqua Jet now gets the knockout. Don't full restore. Don't super potion either. That's just as bad as a full restore, except not as bad, but basically. So it's looking like this might be the end of the episode here. Because it's taken a little bit too long to deal with this one trainer who, you're not even the captain. Just in my way. But thank you for the PC box. I appreciate that. I wonder, does he have anything to do with the Pokepelago? Ooh, Zen Headbutt. Yeah, kind of painful. Because the Pokepelago, of course, works with the PC boxes. So that is the knockout. This battle is looking a little bit more close than I would like. Last one in is going to be a Doug Trio, a Lola form, of course. I'm going to say probably our best bet here, switch out into Dorothy. We will resist, or we'll be immune to the ground attack. Steel will be neutral. But they probably would go for a ground attack first of all. No, they go for steel. Okay. Metal claw. Ooh. Oh. Well, we'll survive a critical. I guess minimize to be safe. Oh, sucker punch. That would have been bad. All right, that's going to be another chance to minimize. But for one more, I'll heal up, and then start going for the uh, hex attacks. Stop hitting with that. Oh, wait, there's the berry juice. All right, so our speed is now boosted thanks to Unburden. I'm going to go with a Super Potion first before we start going for the attacking, though. All right, plus four evasiveness. We now have our speed boosted as well. Super Potion for good old Dorothy. We might be okay here, as long as we don't get the attack boost from Metal Claw. Okay, Sucker Punch. Now, of course, I say that's going to hurt, but if we can dodge it... That'd be great. One more hex is all we need. And they still land their metal claw, really? 
Now, Sucker Punch could be a problem. I'm gonna heal again. I don't want to lose our Pokémon if we can help this. I'm not in the mindset to lose anybody before being able to bring back some injured Pokémon. Plus, I didn't mention this either. Dorothy is currently sitting at two knockouts, two injuries. The way I'm doing the rules of this certain kind of like Nuzlocke style thing, if I lose her again, I can only bring her back after completing a Kahuna trial. However, both Prowl and Sonata have only been injured one time, which means if I need to lose somebody, I can lose them more freely. Not that I want to, of course, but that is what it is. You're with Kikui. Looks like he brought along a good trainer. 3,000 bucks. And I had a feeling this might be happening at this point. And yes, I'm allowing my Alolan starter to reach his final evolutionary stage. Brione, evolving into Primarina. And behold. Nice. Level 34 evolution. I'm going to learn your signature move, I assume. Let's check the Pokedex first, of course. Not much more to say, just look right there. And completed for that whole evolutionary line. Hot diggity, look at you, you're on fire, partner Pokemon Bingo! Yep. Primarina, the soloist Pokemon. Despite being on a team, its singing voice is the chief weapon in battle. This Pokemon's trainer must prioritize the daily maintenance of its throat at all costs. I'm gonna be using a Pokemon refresh on you a lot, ain't I? Hang on. I dropped my stylus in all the excitement of evolution. Now, let's check your animations. Just singing away. That's a cool looking tail slap. Looks like you're shooting Scald or Ice Beam, for example, right there. And that is that. So, let's see. Oceanic. Nope, that's the Z move. You're gonna learn. I was gonna try to remember the name. Sparkling Aria. Yes. Alright, what is the power of Sparkling Aria? 90. The user bursts into song, emitting many bubbles. Any Pokemon suffering from a burn will be healed by the touch of these bubbles. Hmm, more powerful than Scald. Your stats... Your special attack is much, much better now, so... Despite having speed priority with Aqua Jet, I think we will forget that. I don't know, it really comes in handy, though. Do I either want to have the option to burn things or heal burns? And you also notice that it becomes Water Fairy type, of course, as we knew. Let us... Well, I can get Scald back using the TM, so I'll replace Scald for the time being. If I regret that, I can replace Aqua Jet with Scald later on. We have learned our signature move. Now we just need the... Would it be the... Primarinium Z? I don't know what the, na the uh, name of the item is going to be, but we could use the Oceanic Operetta once we get the Starter Z Crystal. Well, well, you certainly seem qualified to take on the trial. Yeah, I think he's even stronger than we were at this point in our island challenge. I, our island challenge, I'm too hyped. One more thing, cousin. The name's Kikui. Who's this masked royal that you're going on about? All right, cousin. I'm heading back to Mally Garden. I figure how should we be done eating Malasada by now? Yeah, M maybe. I was gonna say after all this time, but no, you got a point. I'm sure he makes up. But he, I'm sure I'll make sure he makes it up here too. I'm just so excited for some vanilla ice cream. That guy's as interesting as ever. My old buddy. Welcome to our observatory, Chaz! So unfortunately, we don't yet get to start training on the mountain. I think you better go with Mul Mulane there, pal, see what Hokulani Observatory has to offer. First of all, we're going to have to end the episode because we are probably over time. I do have to cut out those times of the phone calls and stuff, but I think we're still going to be over time for the episode. But I want to say, as I heal up, thanks for checking out today's episode, everybody. Feel free to leave me a like down below if you enjoyed it, and if you didn't, feel free to toss a dislike down there and just let me know what I can do to improve this for the future videos. And if you missed any episodes so far of Pokemon Moon, there is a link in the description to the entire playlist, of course. Let me make sure my Pokemon are arranged properly. Dorothy needs to be in front. There we go. So if you miss any episodes, there is that description, or sorry, link in the description. You can also share that with a friend that might want to check out my adventures in the Alola region. And there are going to be some links in the outro for some other videos that I have done, as well as a link to subscribe. And this time around, I decided I will show off a nice close view of the Pikachu EX Red and Blue Collection, which Spritz is always blocking. Not that it's her fault, I put her there. But 
And once we hit 1,000 subscribers, and we're currently sitting at 980 the last time I checked, I'll be doing an unboxing of this on camera and giving out the Pokemon TCG Online code card to a lucky viewer that answers a question of the day in that video. But in addition to that, as I've been saying, I have the Pokemon TCG Alola Collection Moon version. I'm going to be doing a physical mail-out of this entire sealed package to a lucky viewer for answering that question of the day at the same time in our big 1,000 subscriber celebration. So if you're not subscribed, you're more than welcome to do so and push us towards the level of getting those giveaways sent out to you folks out there. And I guess that's about it. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of the episode, what you're looking forward to in the future of the playthrough, and any other things you want me to talk about discussion-wise in the video. Was there something else I was going to talk about? Yeah, the whole, I have to, you know, bring back certain Pokemon only at certain times, so if Dorothy gets knocked out, then I can't bring her back until after we defeat a Kahuna. So, that's why I want to be careful with her, and the other two Pokemon might have to take a hit or a knockout. But we'll see what happens in the future of the playthrough. But I guess with that, we are all done for the day. I want to say thanks for checking out today's episode once again, everybody. Professor Chaz is signing off, and I'll catch you next time.